This is nuts. Hey friends, it's Shauna for Hollywood Revisited. Welcome back to the channel. It's been 40 years since the movie A Christmas Story hit theaters in 1983. Critics and fans consider it one of the most influential Christmas movies ever made. But the movie's box office reception was initially cold, as Christmas movies back then were not as popular as they are today. However, in 2012, the United States National Film Registry selected the movie for preservation, validating its cultural and historical significance. In 2022, many of the actors reprised their roles in the HBO Max sequel, A Christmas Story Christmas. Today, we're revisiting the original cast, and along the way, we'll answer some interesting questions like, which child actor got sick on set due to a prop man's mistake? Whose Hollywood opportunities dried up after they joined the adult entertainment industry? And which cast member is the parent of the famous individual who has produced all of Drake's albums? We've got a lot to cover, so let's get rolling. Number 1. Peter Billingsley Peter played the unforgettable Ralphie Parker, who spent the whole film obsessively dreaming of getting an iconic Red Ryder BB gun for Christmas. Fun fact! Well, maybe not so fun for Peter, but did you know that one day while shooting the film in 1983, the 12-year-old suddenly became sick on set? The cause was soon discovered to be that the prop man had accidentally given him the real red man chewing tobacco to consume for one of his scenes. Billingsley was a staple in television commercials throughout the 70s and 80s, endorsing countless products. He had other notable roles in movies and television, such as playing Tad in the 1981 movie Paternity, and he had a three-year stint as a co-host of NBC's Real People. He also had a minor MCU role in the first Iron Man movie and in Spider-Man Far From Home as William Ginter Riva, the creator of the Stark Industries Combat Drones. In 2015, he became engaged to Buffy Baines, Speculations have run wild over the years as to whether they ever secretly tied the knot, but there has been no confirmation from either of them. Peter's net worth today is estimated to be $12 million. Number 2. Gene Shepard Gene beautifully narrated the movie, providing insights into how things unfolded for his character's younger self. He had a long and successful career in the industry. He started out as a radio broadcaster, then became a short story writer, and starred in a television program early in his career. Shepard was married a total of four times. He was briefly married to Barbara Mattoon in 1947. His second wife was Joan Laverne Warner from 1950 until 1960, with whom he had two children. After their divorce, he married two-time Emmy Award winner Lois Nettleton from 1960 until 1967, and then he finally tied the knot with Lee Brown in 1977 and remained married to her until her passing in 1998. Gene was evasive when it came to discussing his personal life with the public. He often created misleading stories about his personal experiences and family background. Gene Shepard died on October 16, 1999 in Fort Myers, Florida, at the age of 78. In 2005, he was posthumously inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame. Number 3. Darren McGavin Darren was a well-known Broadway actor who also had a successful career in television and movies. He initially started out as a painter at the Columbia Pictures Studio in 1945. When a small role suddenly opened for the 1945 movie A Song to Remember, he quickly auditioned and landed the role. McGavin's first starring role was in the 1955 film Summertime. Darren was also the lead actor in The Night Stalker, a hugely popular 1972 television film. Darren played an important role in the 1984 film The Natural, but due to a contract dispute, he was uncredited for his portrayal of Gus Sands. McGavin was married three times. In 1942, he married Anita Marie Williams. He was married to Melanie York from 1944 until 1969. They shared four children. His third marriage was with popular actress Kathy Brown. They were married from 1969 until her death in 2003. Darren McGavin died on February 25, 2006, at the age of 83, due to cardiovascular disease. Number 4. Melinda Dillon Melinda had a successful career as an actress, spanning nearly five decades. Originally displaying her skills as an improvisational comedian, she eventually performed on Broadway and was nominated for a Tony Award in 1962. Her first feature film was 1969's The April Fools. Dylan was also nominated for the Best Supporting Actress Oscar in Steven Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind. In 1963, Melinda married actor Richard Libertini. They had a tumultuous marriage, which ended in divorce in 1978. 
They had a son together. Dylan had a brief stay in a psychiatric hospital due to depression. During this time, she turned down numerous projects as she aimed to be more mentally fit to take on newer roles. Nowadays, Melinda is retired and has been away from the spotlight since 2007. She has an estimated net worth of $3 million. Number 5. Scott Schwartz Scott's role as Flick is fondly remembered by audiences throughout the years. Who could forget his triple dog dare scene in the movie? Schwartz was a well-known child actor in the 1980s, starring in movies such as The Toy and a lead role in 1984's Kidco. In the 1990s, Scott ventured into the adult entertainment industry, starting with minor, non-intimate roles, but he eventually won an AVN. It was reported that his Hollywood acting offers dried up during this time. In 1989, he had a brief relationship with adult actress Lynn LeMay. Scott also lived with model Jay Jones for a short time. He's currently single. In 2004, Scott started accepting minor roles in mainstream films again, including Skinwalker and Unseen Evil 2. His net worth today is estimated to be at $500,000. Number 6. R.D. Robb Robb played the role of Schwartz, one of Ralphie's friends. He was the one who triple dog dared Flick to lick the frozen pole. Robb had minor roles in television in the early 80s, including the TV movie Little Arliss in 1984. In 1985, he directed a film called Don's Plum, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Tobey Maguire. The film was blocked from a release in the US and Canada, as DiCaprio and Maguire claimed they had only agreed to star in a short film, but not a feature film. The dispute was settled out of court, and the film was never publicly released, although it was leaked on the internet. Rob never married and is currently single. He's mostly stayed off the radar for the last two decades. Currently, his net worth is estimated at $1.5 million. Number 7. Zach Ward Zach played the main bully antagonist, Scut. He has credited A Christmas Story as his stepping stone toward a career in acting. The movie was his film debut. Since 1983, he has played numerous roles in both film and television, and has stayed active in the industry to this day. One of his most popular roles was playing Dave Scoville on the Fox show Titus. Zach is the son of Pam Hyatt, a famous Canadian actress. He sued Warner Brothers and Inesco in 2011 for merchandising a figure that closely resembled his Scott Farkas character. It was revealed that his contract for the movie did not include merchandising rights. The lawsuit was dropped in 2012. Ward married Jennifer McMahon in 2018, and his net worth today is around $5 million. Number 8. Ian Petrella Ian shot to fame when he played Randy, the younger brother of Ralphie Parker. Randy was stubborn and whiny, but super observant. Ian was nominated for a young artist role for his role as Randy. As a child actor, he landed multiple television roles in the 1980s and early 1990s, including NBC's Different Strokes, ABC's Once a Hero, and Beverly Hills 90210. We know he is married, but his personal life has been kept private. Petrella is currently working in animation and puppetry in Cleveland, Ohio. He served as a guest tour guide at the A Christmas Story House and Museum in Cleveland, Ohio from November 2010 until January of 2021. His net worth is estimated to be $1 million. Number 9. Teddy Moore Teddy played Miss Shields, the teacher of Ralphie, and his friends in the film. She was pregnant with her second child during the filming of the movie. Moore has played numerous roles in both television and film from 1961 until 2017. She had a small role in the 1979 horror film Murder by Decree and 2002's The Scream Team. Moore is currently in a long-term relationship with well-known Canadian filmmaker Donald Shabib. Teddy was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis back in 2007. Her net worth is estimated to be $1 million. She is the mother of Noah James Shabib, better known as 40, the Grammy Award-winning record producer, songwriter executive who has produced all of Drake's albums to date. Anne has worked with other A-list musicians, including Beyonce, Jamie Foxx, Lil Wayne, and Alicia Keys. Number 10. Yano Ayana Yano had multiple acting roles in a few movies throughout the 1980s. He starred in multiple films such as 1985's Better Off Dead, where he performed the voiceover for the lead paperboy in the movie. Ayana also starred in the 1988 indie film Blue Iguana. He played as a young Michael Anthony Jr. in Van Halen's hugely popular 1984 music video, Hot for Teacher. 
Yano has been married to actress and producer Selena Andrews since 2009. Unbeknownst to many, Ayana is the younger brother of actress Katie Kurtzman. While he never formally retired from the industry, Yano Ayana now works as a body transformation expert and exercise science educator. His net worth is estimated to be $2 million. Number 11, Jeff Gillen. Jeff was an actor and a film director who enjoyed a lengthy career in the industry. Aside from playing the world's meanest mall Santa in A Christmas Story, he co-directed the 1974 psychological film Deranged, played a minor role in the 1988 comedy movie Police Academy 5, and had a cameo in the 1983 comedy film Easy Money. Jeff never married. In 1991, he retired from the industry and relocated back to Florida. Later in life, he created and opened Great Southern Studios in North Miami Beach. He served as the president of the studio. Jeff Gillen died on June 27, 1995 in North Miami Beach, Florida, due to a massive heart attack at the age of 53. Number 12, Leslie Carlson. Leslie was a late bloomer in the industry. It wasn't until he was 39 years old that he got his first acting credit from a Canadian drama TV series called Norman Corwin Presents. But that didn't stop him from enjoying an almost four decade career, which spanned from 1972 until he retired in 2010. He also acted in stage plays in Canada, the United States, and England. Carlson earned a Bachelor of Fine Arts and a Master of Arts while studying at the University of South Dakota. He was a close friend of well-known Canadian director David Cronenberg. His first wife was actress Patricia Hamilton, but after having two children, the marriage ended in divorce. He married his second wife, Joan Warren, in 1983. Leslie is the father of actor Ben Carlson, who has played in various television shows since the early 2000s. Leslie Carlson passed away on May 3, 2014 in Toronto, Canada, due to cancer at the age of 81. Number 13, Patty Johnson. Patty played the grouchy elf in the department store Santa scene. Producers of the movie initially wanted a teenager to play the part. She never intended to be in the film, as she held a teaching job in Cleveland, Ohio, but she attended a crowded casting call nonetheless. Patty impressed the casting crew by telling them she had professional elf experience and showing them photos from her past job as a singing elf at Higby's. After the movie, she returned to her teaching job in Cleveland, Ohio, and became a local celebrity. Patty also had minor appearances in 2008's A Christmas Story documentary, Road Trip for Ralphie, and the 2009 documentary film, Clark World. Patty Johnson is now retired, but is still active in her community. Number 14, Drew Hosever. Drew played the other mischievous department store elf alongside Patty. This was his lone acting credential. He had a brief cameo in the 2009 documentary film Clark World. Little is known about Drew, but multiple sources say that after the film's success, he returned to Cleveland, Ohio, and resumed his teaching job. He enjoyed a local celebrity status in the city while occasionally appearing with Patty Johnson to sign autographs with fans. If you enjoyed revisiting the cast of A Christmas Story with us, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And if you notice that we missed anyone, leave a comment below. See you in the next one.